Hey guys, a fair few people have been asking me to make a video on a tier list. Now one does exist, and to save you time, here it is. This is a tier list by a Discord user of the name of CrazyFrag45, who has been very active in the gaming community for Watcher of Realms for the past couple of years, I believe. And yeah, he's basically the go-to knowledge on what characters are most useful, where his tier lists get updated every now and then. This is the most recent one that exists. As you can see, it's a couple of months out already. I hope he doesn't mind me using it. Thank you very much, Crazy Frag, for your contribution and help with the community. So all credit to him. I'm going to get into a bit of detail on the individual heroes and what I think of them, but I'd like to give you a quick summary first to save your time. One of the first things I would like to say is, in my opinion, fighters are the most valuable legendaries in the game. Fighters have so much impact. They can be used in a lot of content. After that, I would say marksmen are a close second and I would put defenders all the way at the bottom as simply there isn't a lot of content that requires super tanky units and a lot of the legendary fighters can kind of do that themselves of a good healer. And the content that does require a really tanky defender usually just need one of them. So of the units I would recommend or the units I would put forward strongly from the fighters, Salazar and Zillatu are absolute monsters. Araka is also very good. Her Lord benefit is just super powerful. From the mages, Ajax is great for AoE content. Nocturne is great for burst damage. He's also very good in guild boss. From the marksman, Hatsu is just incredible in campaign progression and in raid content. Calypso is very good generally in pretty much all content. Elowin is just an amazing healer that will get you very far and is obviously the only legendary healer as well, so you really do want to pull her. And of the defenders, I would say Torador and Captain Reeve are probably the best. I really don't rate Regulus, the dude is just tanky, I don't care. Of some of the epics to quickly recommend, Lunaria is a very good single target nuker from the Marksman. Lisa is great for dealing area damage reliably. Shark King is great for his ultimate dealing burst damage. Of the mages, Ignatius is very good and he's also a very good Lord Benefit. You want a Lord Benefit if you're using a Zillatu, for example, and it also allows Jangwa to be very useful in Guild Boss. Cordelia is a great mage as well. Raph you will get on 14th day as a login. He is very powerful. Deimos, the werewolf you see at Attack Fighter 1 and excellent. He is amazing in Guild Boss. Scorch is very useful for holding down two lane attack. He's very good for progression in the campaign. Some other people I'd like to mention, I think it's Wanaga, you can see in the Mono Healer. She is very good because she busts attack speed, so she's used in Guild Boss. You also see Anvita down at B tier, however, she is used a lot in guild boss at the moment because she also buffs attack damage of nearby units so she is considered quite potent and baron is a very good defender though i would recommend levania as a fusion defender if you haven't pulled any good defenders so that's a super quick overview of some of the best units if i was to rank units by the different gear raids as that's probably one of the most important content for gear raid one which is an aoe raid you are going to want units like ajax zealous and morrigan these are the most important legendaries for that level cordelia is also fairly useful when you're looking towards gear raid two you're going to need a defender honestly almost any any defender will work for this levania did the job even rex by himself can do the job for a while until you need another one but if you're struggling, definitely fuse Lavania. She will get a lot done for you. Aside from that, Salavik can be very useful there. And I found, unsurprisingly, Salazar was very useful in Gear Raid 2 because his ult can wipe out the rolling boulders and he also gets iframes when he's not there anymore. So his phasing out is very useful for that level as well. For Gear Raid 3, basically everything from the Marksman list, you just want as much as you can from there. Gear Raid 3 is quite hard. They are all winners, really. Shark King is less useful, though he does still have his usage. Lisa is incredibly potent, as this requires a lot of AoE. Hatsu is amazing in Gear Raid 3. Calypso is also still very good, but she doesn't do AoE damage, so it's a little bit trickier for her. I actually found some value in using Jangwa in Gear Raid 3 and placing her at the front to snipe the boss, just so it's quite difficult usually to kill the boss. So I would recommend trying a single target Nuka like Nocturne or Jangua if you're having trouble. Yeah, that about covers that. For Guild Boss, you're going to want massive damage units such as Zillatu, Nocturne, Salazar, Jangua. Raph is also very good. Salavik is also very good. Just high single target damage. Calypso is very good. These are the kind of units you're going to want for that. And I will get into some more detail on them individually now. I will focus just on the legendary ones because otherwise it'll be quite a long video. I won't cover builds because there's a, there's a gear guide if you want to check that out. But if you have any specific questions just ask me below and I'll get back to you pretty quickly. So let's get on with the legendaries. So starting from the left first in the A tier for Marksman you have Hatsa. Now Hatsa belongs to the Nightmare Council. She is a legendary Marksman and she is incredible. If you have pulled her, congratulations. She will help you massively. She definitely earned her spot in the A tier. I really would like to pull her myself. Her basic attack 
will bounce to one nearby enemy, dealing only 20% of the damage, but it's still nice to have. This is very good when dealing with airborne units, which is in many of the campaign stages, which is fantastic for, for the gear raid free. And the main thing I like about her is her ultimate bursts up to five nearby enemies, 180% every 0.3 seconds for three seconds. So that's 10 instances of 180% damage. That is very powerful. She has the ability to inflict defense down as well, defense reduction for 10%, which can obviously de increase based on how much you've leveled up her skills. And also when you deploy her, she is invisible for 20 seconds, which means she's very useful for some of the later campaign chapters where the last unit you place takes damage, for example, that won't affect her because she is not visible in that window. So she's very easily placed. So definitely earns her spot up top. Next, we have Calypso in the list. Calypso is fantastic as a DPS unit. She is a single target focused marksman. Her ultimate is an auto passive that builds up over time up to four stacks. And when she gets each stack, every attack fires an additional shot that does 20% of her attack in damage. Obviously these things can change based on skill ups. This means that over time, eventually whenever you fire a shot, four additional shots get fired alongside it, dealing 20% extra. So you're dealing 80 to, depending on if you've upgraded these things, near over 100% once you've got them maxed and you have them over. So she takes time to, to heat up during battle and then she'll do a great deal of damage towards the end of it. It's just very consistent, high DPS, very reliable, very good in campaign, very good in gear raid free, good on guild boss, good in the arena on many stages, single target stage, aerial stage. So Calypso has a lot of utility and can be used in a hell of a lot of places. And she's also a member of the Piercer faction. If you can get one of the Lords, she will become even more potent with the increase in attack range. Next up on the list is Nyx. Personally, I would put her at B tier. I don't actually have her, so maybe that's controversial to say, but from friends who do have her and from me using her as an assist and seeing her in use, I have not been impressed with what Nyx has been able to do. She does cost quite a lot, 25 to place. She is focused on dealing AoE damage, but it's kind of strange AoE damage. Her blade, when it flies back, does 30% of the attack to enemies on the path, which isn't particularly reliable and it's not particularly high. The main thing is that when she attacks an enemy, it deals with her ultimate triggered. It deals area damage equal to 60% of free attacks for 20 seconds. I'm personally not super keen on her compared to Calypso and Hatsut, who are very powerful but she certainly has her place and I believe there are changes coming to her soon. And again, she is a member of the Star Piercers, so she has a lot to gain from being in one of the parties that has one of those lords if you do have one. Now we'll have a look at some of the legendary mage unit. First, we see Nocturne as A tier for mono attack. Nocturne is very potent. The main reason for it is he's a very high single target damage. Again, fantastic in campaign. Campaign does not have a lot of swarm content. There are very few levels where you have hundreds of enemies coming at you and you need loads of AOE damage to kill them. Usually it's a trickle of enemies and you need high damage to deal with them. Nocturne is great for that. On top of that, he can increase his attack range. just makes him very easy to place. He's not as difficult to get use out of. He isn't as restricted by the level's layout. And of course, he is useful in a lot of content. He is not as useful in Gear Raid 1 since he is not AOE damage, but he's great on the guild boss. He's great in arena, on single target, and reasonably decent in group, maybe even aerial combat. He is also a member of the North and the Infernal factions, which makes it easy to find a place to use him. And generally, he's just a very strong damage unit to have. And in this game, damage is king. If you are having difficulty clearing a level, it's usually because you're not dealing enough damage, not because you're not healing enough or not tanking enough. That can be the case, but the majority of the time, it's because you're not dealing enough damage, and Nocturne will get you there. Now, you'll notice that Shamir and Twin Fiend are ranked lower then Nocturne. The simple reason for this is Shamir is kind of split. He is a mono DPS mage, but his DPS just isn't as high as Nocturne and he doesn't have the utility of hitting as far away. You can see he's supposed to be more control focused. He can increase the damage that enemies take, but aside from that, it's not like he has loads of CC. He doesn't freeze people in place or stun them. And because of that, he's just not as valuable as someone like Nocturne who focuses purely on just single target damage and can increase the range. It just has a lot of utility in being able to do that. Twin Fiend again, focus fire, but with AoE attack and with burning, he kind of does a bit of everything. He can do decent focus damage. He can do decent AoE damage with his Meteor Strike. He is actually a Lord for the Infernal Faction, which is very potent. So he is fantastic if you have someone like Zilla 2 to pair with. Zilla 2 really wants the Lord benefits from either Twin Fiend or from Ignatius, but 
Twin Fiend himself is a very good unit to pull. He is just not quite as powerful as Nocturne because Nocturne is so focused on what he does. And again, the increased range is just not to be snuffed at. Moving on to the AoE mages, we have Ajax to start. Ajax is arguably the best AoE mage in the game. He can just push out so much damage. And one of the most important things about him is he belongs to the unnameable faction. And what this means is he can be affected by Lord skills of any faction and trigger skill effects as a member of that faction. So anywhere you put him, if you have a Lord for the Nightmare faction, such as Wrath, which you'll get at 14 day login, he'll become part of that faction and add to the attack speed bonus. If you put him with Twin Fiend, he'll get Twin Fiend's bonuses. So there's just a lot you can get out of Ajax because of his just being so flexible with Lord benefits. He also just has a huge amount of AoE damage. His ultimate makes him do crazy damage over time. He also has passives that add to damage. He is basically just so focused on dealing AoE damage that he is incredibly reliable. The best hero you can get for gear raid 1 progression. He is pretty much useful throughout the campaign as well. He does have a higher placement cost, which is a very big difficulty. So he's maybe not the best character to pull super early, but that depends how much mileage you get out of him. Overall, he is considered a very, very good unit. Next up, we have two cursed heroes. We have Zealus. And we have Morrigan. Zealus was my second legendary hero. I did not get a lot of use out of him early on. He is just so expensive. 29 cost to place is so much. And then his entire kit focuses on dealing AoE damage. And the range is quite specific as well. It's not like a gigantic cone like Ajax. Eventually I built Zealus properly. Got him 6 starred and I started to use him in gear raid 1. And he really helped me crush gear raid 1. So because of that I would say Zealus definitely is a good unit to have. He just doesn't shine in all of the content because his cost is so high and because he's not like burst damage, he's just very consistent high AoE damage, which is very useful in gear raid 1, not that useful in most of the campaign, which is not horde waves, it's not swarms of enemies, usually it's a trickle of enemies, usually there's a boss involved, and Zealus doesn't really do a lot for you in those scenarios, especially with his cost being as high as it is. Now we have Morrigan as well, her cost as you can see is 12 lower, which is significantly lower. On top of that she is actually a lord of the curse faction granting 30% bonus damage to slowed, stunned, frozen and immobilized enemies and increasing AoE damage dealt by the faction members by 25%. So a very good unit to have. She deals AoE damage, she inflicts the free targets. Now free targets is, is worse than just being AoE damage of course because this has a cap. This isn't as good for gear raid 1. Again her auto ultimate up to free targets but it's a bomb which is slightly different. Surrounding enemies for 50% which is quite, quite decent. And when it detonates it, it applies a ground effect area dealing 50% damage per second for eight seconds and it also affects airborne and she also gains a huge amount of damage after being placed for a longer time so morrigan is a strong unit she is much more accessible and usable than zealous i would personally rate her higher than zealous it's just that zealous is much better for gear raid one because he is pure aoe damage and he also applies a magic debuff to the enemy system, so they take more damage from magic so zealous is just like out and out pure gear raid one monster morrigan is more useful in general content in my opinion now moving on to the fighter bracket, this is perhaps, in my opinion, the most important category uh, that's maybe contentious. It's, in my opinion, fighters just have the most utility. Marksmen, you could argue, might have more because they're also useful in, in the airborne stages. However, fighters are ultimately the people you stick in lanes to stop enemies getting through. And that's how you win the game, right? You, so you make sure that no enemies get through to the other side. Now, mages are good and all. But I would rank, in terms of the actual class structure, I would probably put fighters at the absolute top, and then marksmen, and then healers, then mages, and then defenders. That's kind of how, obviously it's not that simple, you need a mixture of all of them. But in terms of how impactful a good unit from each one is, fighters you just get so much out of. And kicking it off with Salazar really kind of hammers home that point. Salazar is like, if you have him, he does all the work for you. If you don't have him, he's the guy you really want. He just achieves everything in this game. He absolutely carried me through most of the campaign and continues to do so. He helps me in gear raid 1, which doesn't make sense. It's an AoE campaign. It's, it's an AoE raid. Why the hell is a guy with some pointy dagger doing work in gear raid 1? He just does so much damage that he's relevant. Obviously, not all the work. Zealus does all the work, but somehow, even with Zealus in the group, Salazar's damage is still notable, and he will out-DPS other AoE mages that I have at my point. Salazar just does such high DPS that... Even in gear raid 1, he does notable damage. In gear raid 2, he is just so crucial to my team. 
Obviously, he's not useful in Gear Raid 3 whatsoever. The only place in the game I don't use Salazar, literally the only place. I use him in the Artifact Fragment Raid. I use him in Grind the Material Fragment Raid. I use him extensively in Guild Boss. He's my highest DPS by miles. He outstrips everyone. He's at like 8 million, and then the next person, Salavik, at 6 million, and then it's just massive drops to the rest of them. Salazar will be viable in any content pretty much as long as the enemies are not flying and even then they're scared of him. The thing that makes Salazar so good is mainly just his burst damage is ridiculous. The slashing blitz ultimate six targets for a very high multiplayer and it is guaranteed to be critical on bleeding targets he can apply a bleed with a 15 percent chance on his auto attacks so if you are able to time it and you use his ult when the target is bleeding even early game you can guarantee his ult crits on every hit which is insane on top of that slashing blitz gives him an invulnerability window while he is doing the blitz he is completely immune to damage so you can use this to iframe dodge the guild boss's ult if you miss if you're unable to break the shield in time just use his ult if you still have it and or hold your ult if you know you're not going to break the shield and you can use it at the last second to phase out during the dragon's attack come back afterwards and get some more blood damage on the guild boss you can just do this throughout so much content you can use this to skip across lanes to kill enemies further away than a fighter would normally reach it's just incredibly good on top of that his he has the potential for self-sustain down to every five critical hits giving him eight percent of his max hp back which is not a crazy amount but it is pretty good over time and he is definitely able to self-sustain to a notable amount so yes, yeah, Salazar is just a beast. He is useful in practically everything. If they are not flying, he will kill them. Volker is a solid unit as well. You get her from completing the storyline quest, which I have just recently done. She attacks multiple enemies at the same time, which is very nice, especially when you're using your fighters to block a lane and you're making sure that they don't want you don't want them to slip past. Rather than having to rely on them dealing enough damage to kill them in time, she will affect them all at the same time and it will be quite easy to stem the tide. On top of that, she applies vulnerability with her ultimate, making enemies take more damage. And she also has a lot of self-sustain via killing enemies under these effects. On top of that, she has the ability to heal herself and her allies based on each of her attacks, which is just a really nice way of sustaining herself and the party. So a lot of self-sustain. She does pretty decent damage as well and she applies debuffs to the enemies. So all in all, very solid to have. But the level of damage is just not the same as Salazar which is just out of this world. Salavik who is Salazar's ugly cousin he also does very decent damage he has the ability to hit two tile range when his boundless endurance ultimate is active increases his max health increases his range by one reduces damage taken and his attacks deal damage to everyone in that range twice he hits through and pulls back out so it's the two attack and it's just AoE through all those enemies so it's not captured at the number of enemies and the second time it activates it becomes permanent so he just becomes a cleaving machine he has very good damage output not as high as Salazar, but not a million miles away. It's very reliable. When he takes damage, his passive stacks up, increasing his damage output and his attack speed, so very good. And on top of that, he has ultimate torrent, making him incredible at holding a lane and holding a, a position and self-sustaining. When his HP falls below a certain threshold, he locks HP so he can't die for 4 seconds, and then after which he restores 30% of his max HP. So he is very good at holding, sustaining, dealing AoE damage, just a fantastic unit to hold lanes. I used him a lot in some of the later chapters. I use him a lot in Guild Boss. I use him a lot in the arena. I use him in Gear Raid 2. Salovic is just very good generally to have. Araka is the legendary lord of the Piercer faction. She is very good, as you can see from her position on the tier list. And what makes her so good, largely I would say it's because she's the legendary lord of the Piercer faction. Increasing their attack range, 10% stats, and every time they attack a unit one tile beyond their original attack, so when they get the benefit of this attack range increase, they gain 60% increased damage. As you can see, she gains bonus damage against units which are unblocked. So this is especially good against airborne units which you won't block, and she gains increased crit rate which makes her very easy to build as you won't be pushing for that 100% crit rate as hard it'll be a lot easier to attain that via this just straight up talent she has she also with her ultimate she can attack one more target and she gets increased damage for 20 seconds which is quite nice she has a passive which deals poison attack they take 10% magic damage for three seconds which is good and if they die they explode for aoe damage which also inflicts poison and she has another passive after every six attacks the next attack will wrap the target in spider webs for one second and extending to two seconds if the target is airborne so as you can see she has the ability to hit multiple tar two targets at a time of her ultimate activated with high damage output with debuffs to apply and with the ability to root them in place she is just an absolute slayer for the airborne phases making her incredibly good in gear raid 3 very good throughout the campaign and the piercer faction is just full of very good marksmen such as lisa that you'll be using quite a lot so she's just a very good character to pull she has a great lord benefit she has a great toolkit especially dealing with airborne units which will become a pain for a lot of the campaign as well as gear raid 3 which is the most difficult gear raid right now so 
a very valuable unit to pull definitely one of the best on top of that what makes a racker so potent is the fact that she's not actually a marksman she has the ability to target airborne units with her basic attack and she can root them in place but she's not actually an archer if you look by her attack range she is actually a fighter and obviously by it saying fighter so very interesting unit she can hold lane very well and she can deal with airborne units which is very nice to have so she's very good in a lot of content she's very diverse and dynamic great unit Valkyra is a fighter for the north faction she has the ability to apply magic vulnerability on multiple enemies she has the ability to increase her damage as well as shield herself increasing her attack range and her attack speed and increasing her damage more she also has increased damage the longer she is deployed and she can revive an ally once per mission which is very nice so she has a lot of utility she attacks in three tiles which is really nice really long for a fighter it means she doesn't have to be right at the front if the boss is especially tanky you can put her behind a defender if you need to she can revive which is fantastic if, if the defender dies if someone else dies it's just generally a very nice perks to have especially on a fighter so she'll be damage focused but with good utility the debuff on magic vulnerability makes her very useful working with aoe teams and the fact that she attacks multiple enemies in range means that she'll hit everyone within those three tiles so she's actually quite useful on aoe stages as well zilla 2 is often regarded as one of the best units to pull her attack range is nice as you can see here but when she uses her ultimate it extends even further and she gets a very long attack range on top of that it increases her damage and killing enemies can extend the duration as well as attacks inflicting burning so there's a lot of utility in just her ultimate her basic attacks can hit airborne units as well like araka so very nice utility there and she deals bonus damage against units she is blocking herself so she can handle pretty much every scenario she is great for just dealing with pretty much everything she has really high single target damage she does bonus damage on the first attack pretty much if enemies are above 80 percent hp and yeah she just does super high damage she is probably one of the highest single target damage dealers in the game if you inspect guild boss runs you will see zilla 2 often at the top just dealing absolute monstrous damage in fact now that we're getting to the end of the fighter tier let me just go and show you quickly to the guild boss and if we head to nightmare 3 because most people at the moment are clearing nightmare 3 rather than nightmare 4 we'll get more stats on this the world rankings moors and if you can see from his damage output Zilla 2 absolutely miles ahead. 59 million second Calypso at 22. Then we have Jangwa at number 3. Nocturne at number 4. Salazar at number 5. Go to the second person, Heavenly Host. Again, Zilla 2 at the top. Salazar. Go to Ray Pinassis. Again, Zilla 2 at the top. Nocturne, Calypso, Whisper. Zilla 2 at the top. Jangwa, Salazar, Nocturne, Calypso. So you can see these are the same five names that you'll see pretty much everywhere. It's also important to note that one of the reasons why Zilla 2 and Jangwa are always appearing is because there will usually be a Twin Fiend or an Ignatius given the Lord benefit which is necessary but the main thing I wanted to show you is just how high and how much damage Zilla 2 does. She is an absolute monster. Super high single target damage making her invaluable in the guild boss, invaluable against many campaign stages especially with the flexibility of her attack range. So yeah super high damage unit, very good to have. Very simply healers we have Elowin. Elowin is great. She is the only legendary healer in the game. She is an AoE healer. She targets three allies in range for 42% of her attack. Her ultimate dispels all debuffs for all allies in her range and heals them by 18% of her attack for per second for 10 seconds. She has this passive Alpha Forest. She can deploy a Wood Elf anywhere where you can place a normal fighter or defender. It has to be a free tile. And all adjacent tiles will heal for 12% of her attack every half a second for 10 seconds. 20 instances of heals. So a huge amount of healing. It means she can heal someone across the other side of the map and it's just incredible utility. She's helped me a massive amount. And her other passive just basically restores rage to all allies equal to their, a percentage of their rage cap. So she just passively helps their, her allies get their ultimates up, which is an incredible utility to have on top of already an amazing healer, having the utility of her wood elves as well and being able to dispel debuffs. So she is just ridiculously good. As far as healers go, there is no one better. Now onto defenders, I would again like to stress in my personal opinion defenders are not particularly valuable in Water of Realms in the current state. Having one is good, so if you have one of these three legendaries, don't sweat it, it's not a bad thing. It's just that in my opinion they are not as valuable as having someone like Zilla 2 or Salazar, Araka, Calypso, people who will do the damage to get the missions done. Having a King Haas, a Torador, a Regulus, it's great, they're not going to die, they will hold their position until the end of time. But the enemies won't die either they don't really do a great deal of damage and that's really what gets the game done that's how you win in this game is by killing the enemies not by making them sit still in front of you for a cup of tea for half an hour so these guys are great they have a lot of their own power their own utility but the current content in the game 
does not press defenders so hard that you really need a top tier defender. So King Haas, he is the legendary lord for the North faction. He increases the defense of shielded allies by 20%. There is also the blessing where periodically faction members will gain a shield equal to 30% of their max HP and others would gain 15% of the max HP for 20 seconds. Just a very nice thing, survivable to have. It helps with a lot of some of the tricky stages with the AoE damage coming out or with the bosses that are just so hard to defend against. He would be great in Gear Raid 2 for this reason. The amount of AoE ambient damage you take from the earthquakes from the boss, it's just great to have that kind of shielding on. Shields absorb more damage on him, so he's great when paired with a healer like Vortex. Just damage reduction when general shield effects are up, so again, works with his Lord benefit, works with his ultimate. So very tanky, has the ability to apply freezes, so at least he has some CC to, to buffer his tankiness. So pretty good defender to have. Now the next defender we have, one I would like to pull is Torador. He can apply a defense reduction on enemies, which is great. He can ultimate to increase his attack speed and damage and he'll attack multiple enemies. He attacks two tiles as well, which is nice to have. So this will be attacking AOE in two tile range at faster speed and higher damage. That's a pretty good thing to have. So maybe he could do decent output of damage. I haven't got him, so I can't test that myself. He has a 20% chance of dealing an area attack, which stuns. That's fantastic having that level of CC, especially when you're attacking in two range. And also when he dies, he revives himself on 50% health. Those can only happen once per mission. So generally very tanky, has the potential for decent damage output, has potential for AOE stun. So very nice. And he can obviously bring himself back to life. Just a, a very good unit to have. My main reason I like him and I want him is because of his legendary lord benefit. Basic attacks of a faction team members have a 20% chance of dealing additional damage once. So basically double hit. And if you look at his faction team, you have Salazar there, you have Raph, you have Hatsut, Salavik, Volker. These are just really good damage units. So having that legendary lord bonus with these 20% chance of double attack is just really powerful for him. So... A great defender to have and then last on this tier list is regulus in my opinion from my experience i would put regulus at the bottom stack for defenders i would almost be tempted to put him down into the b rank tier list mainly because all he does is not die he increases his defense for every enemy he blocks he can share damage from allies to make them take less damage which is nice but normally there's not that much damage around and if there is and you have an aoe healer that's typically better every 14 attacks he stuns all blocking enemies but it can only be triggered once every 10 seconds and when his health drops below 10 percent he becomes immune to all damage for eight seconds up to one time per battle this just seems kind of rubbish to me when you've got someone like salavik who can yes the duration is a lot lower than this but it's not only one time per battle and he heals afterwards so to me regulus is just lacking he doesn't do enough he doesn't do enough to help you kill the enemies he just doesn't die which is wonderful but you want a bit more now the last defender which is not on this list is the very own Captain Reeve who was available in a limited event. I believe he is not available anymore. I did get lucky enough to pull him. Captain Reeve is amazing. I don't have Torador so I don't know about him but from what I know about the other defenders I would put Captain Reeve as the best defender in the game in my personal opinion. The reason for this is ultimate deals 200% AOE magic damage to multiple enemies around and stuns for one second lasting 20 seconds. So what this means is his attacks will do bonus damage to enemies around him and stun for a second so with that pair that with his increased attack speed he is stunning everyone in a large range around him every time he swings his anchor for a second and the damage is not actually not to be sniffed at it's actually quite decent damage as well i've noticed him actually quite high on the damage meters in certain scenarios so his damage is decent it's magic it's aoe it's aoe stun on top of that he also passively slows five adjacent enemies by 50 percent this will go all the way up to 10 adjacent enemies when max this includes the diagonals as well so it's just a huge amount of slow it doesn't sound amazing it's actually pretty good it's just really good at holding a lane if you pair this with every swing stunning for a second when his ultimate is up it's just really good control if you pair this as well with a, with a lord from the curse faction even just nero nero's benefit 15 percent more damage to slowed stunned etc units so 15 percent more bonus damage to other curse units such as zealous or to cordelia so just a lot of benefit in having that and also if units are under control such as his stun he restores three percent max hp when he hits them which scales up more to seven percent it's just nice he has self-sustain he has aoe damage he has aoe stun he has aoe slow it, it's just a good kit to have on a defender mainly because he isn't focused on just staying alive if you notice the only thing that focuses on his survival is a little bit of self-sustain it's just not that important. We'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Any questions, ask below and I'll get back to you. And take care. Bye-bye.